Welcome everyone to the Kindle Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. In Wednesday's action, we saw a rebound of the late sell-off that we saw on Tuesday. There was no basis for the sell-off on Tuesday other than some coronavirus stories and all the headlines that came in after that basically said that there was concerns by investors about the increase in cases. In the end, this is the noise in the market. The underlying sentiment remains very positive. This is why we've seen these sharp rebounds when we have negative sessions because the underlying sentiment is still very positive. Market participants are looking forward to a further recovery in the economy. We're still about two weeks from any huge amount of earnings coming out. The week of the 20th, we'll start to see an increase in the number of earnings releases. I expect we're going to hear all the negative forward-looking comments but I believe the markets are going to look beyond that. By that time, there'll be more evidence about the COVID, whether there's real material issues there or not, but certainly the news stories are gonna to continue to evolve around that until they can't. This is the only narrative that is out there at the moment. The economic backdrop is terrible, we know that. Now we've seen a lot of dislocation of capital. There was a story out earlier today that Bed Bath & Beyond is closing 200 stores. Brooks Brothers is filing for bankruptcy. A lot of these retailers are rolling over. The commercial real estate market is definitely in peril at this time. As I've been discussing over the last couple broadcasts that I've done, that market participants are really focused in on the election. The administration is talking about doing another trillion dollar stimulus and they continue to add stimulus on top of stimulus, and we're seeing a continuation of the pumping of the backdrop in the economy. My concern is that we'll never see the end of the PPP or some other program like it, which will end up to be some sort of universal income and may never go away. A lot of the areas of the economy that have been destroyed are for those lower end employees and we're going to need re-education, restructuring of a lot of industries to get the economy back to a full recovery. That could take years, there's no doubt. But as we look forward to the end of this week, there's no real negatives for the markets below the 3120 level this week. If we did reverse and take that out, there would be some issues. I'll go through all the details and the technicals here in a few minutes. On Thursday, we're also going to be focusing in on the unemployment claims. They're expected to show 1.3 million of new claims. There's no estimates that I could find out there that we're talking about the continuing claims. We're likely to continue to see that number stay up, but if it declines substantially, that's just going to be another trigger for more positive sentiment. Let's take a look at the charts and see what they're telling us is likely to occur on Thursday. Starting looking at the WaveTech tool, the daily database, which I'm watching very closely right now, remains stable. Daily 1.2 long had 91 new buys, 3.2 had 46 new buys, but when you look at the exits, it's basically flat from the amount of symbols coming in. Now remember, we're looking at 16,613 symbols, and we're just not seeing any rotation it's remaining stable, which tells me that a lot of these underlying short-term trends remain in place. As we look at the daily futures chart, this evening's session has been incredibly quiet. We've traded between 31.63 and 31.70. We've only traded 26,000 contracts, which is a very slow session overnight. So we're not seeing any real movement is basically up slightly. We did see a little bit of a rally after the cash close. We're looking to open between five and seven handles higher. The formation is important to understand as PPM1 is at a 0 0.30, which tells us there's a very strong underlying trend on a daily basis. With the PPM at 0 0.30, there's only a 40% probability for the market to decline under 3112 on the futures, which would represent a substantial decline. If we did get there, you would expect to see the market to bounce off of there. The market grid for Thursday, R1 is 3176, S1 is 3150, 
We're likely to see S1 possibly as high as R2, which would push the cash markets up around 3,200. Now, the key level is going to be getting above that 3,176 level. The configuration suggests that we're likely to see a move up at least to 3,190 on the futures. Taking a look at the cash, there's a slight differential in the expectations. We close at 3,169. The Numbers R1 is 31.78, R2 31.87, R3 and RXT, which is the extreme, 31.96 to 32.04. Over the past several days, I've been discussing the potential this week going to that 32.14 level. The cash weekly chart number is R2 on the weekly on the market grid. 31.69 is R1. We've exceeded that, so we're likely to continue towards this 3214 level by the end of the week. I've mentioned this last night, 3190 is not in play right now. There's substantial amount of support between 3120 down to 3110, and if we did reach there, certainly tomorrow, that would represent a buy-the-dip opportunity. This grid will be important to watch in the next Make sure you go to the community section on the YouTube channel and you can see these numbers that are posted there. But the configuration on the weekly charts, whether we look at any of the indexes other than the NASDAQ, which I'm, I will cover here in a minute, anything but the NASDAQ looks almost identical to this. There's a, hundreds and hundreds of stocks that have the same configuration on a weekly basis where we see this strong move in PPM1, and then there is a flat on PPM2 and 3, but they are showing signs that they're about to emerge into an upward acceleration. And as every week goes by, that configuration is telling us more about the probabilities of the markets moving higher. Weekly NASDAQ futures We've traded so far this week R2, which is 10,674. We penetrated that slightly at 10,694. We're currently trading at that 10,664 level. So I expect to see this move up toward the 11,000 level. I believe there's potentially a much higher number in there. This pattern is very bullish. And I think what you're seeing on PPM 2 and 3 down below here on the NASDAQ is what the S&P will what the S&P and other indexes will look like, including many of the underlying symbols that are driving these indices. Expect to see these PPMs continue to evolve and generate a lot of upward pressure as the next several weeks go by. It's obvious that we've begun summer rally. The NASDAQ is not near any major top at this point. There's not a lot of excesses. I continue to talk about something that is important to understand is that the momentum precedes the price movement. And so we're seeing this surge in momentum here. That's going to set the tone for possibly as long as 8 to 12 weeks and longer. Make sure you go watch Sunday night's video in the technical section. When I first start that, I go through the secular trends, not the secular bull market. The, the market is in an uptrend. But the secular trends that I discuss on Sunday's video will be good to watch just to give some more perspective of what's likely to happen over the next several months. At some stage, the NASDAQ will get overdone and we'll see a rotation possibly to the S&P and other markets. One of the things that I think will be necessary as we go through the next six weeks or so is to see the small cap indices come into play. Let's take a look at the IJR, which is the small cap ETF, this will give us an understanding of what needs to happen. Now, we continue to be below the 200-week moving average here on the weekly. PPMs are positive, 0.99. As I mentioned before, a lot of these charts look the same. You got a spike up on PPM 1, PPM 2, and 3 are sideways, but appearing like they want to break out and start to get the underlying trends to turn up. Now, PPM2 is at a minus 1.21, which is a negative reading. It won't take a very large rally next week to get PPM2 to turn up 
as well as PPM3. And when that happens, we're going to start to see more participation of the small cap. Looking at the spread, this is IGR against the S&P. This is the weekly chart on the left. It shows that we're trying to set up some sort of bottoming. We're seeing the rate of change start to increase substantially, which is the first sign that we're going higher. This is PPM1 down below here. It's got a slightly different format. This is telling us the same thing that I was reviewing on the other chart a minute ago. Now the chart on the right is the monthly chart just continues to collapse. The rate of change is starting to move up, but we're still below the zero lines. When this spread chart makes a turn, it's going to last for several months. And this is why I believe that the next rotation, should it occur, will be signaled from these spreads. Otherwise, we're going to have to see the small cap stocks start to participate, which will tell you market sentiment is turning more bullish toward the economy recovering. These companies are having the worst time and trying to get the doors open and try to get some traction back to generate income. This is exactly why the Fed's buying corporate bonds. They're buying a lot of these smaller company bonds. That's where they're focused and supporting the markets. The weekly chart on the left would be the first sign that we're about to move higher. This will complete tonight's video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.